Hello YouTubers, uh, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sabika Anwar Khan and I am a playwright and an actor. And today I want to be talking to you about juggling lots of different types of jobs. It was National Freelancers Day recently which inspired me to make this video and during that day I was actually freelancing in another role. If you're like me in terms of having lots of different skills in different areas then it often means that you get lots of different jobs and it can be really difficult to keep on top of everything. So like I said I'm an actor and a writer as well and kind of venturing towards becoming a writer in general so trying to juggle lots of different jobs can be quite difficult but before I start on my tips I just want to mention that the things that I am going to talk about are from my perspective and not only do I want to talk about freelancing jobs uh, in terms of paid roles as an artist but I also want to talk about life as well so life issues and by that I mean spending time with friends family loved ones uh, searching for work which is actually something that takes time to do cooking cleaning taking care of the house and also making time for yourself. I think it's also really important to note here that I don't have any children. So for those of you who do have kids and are smashing life and achieving all of your dreams and goals and living your life's purpose, then please leave comments below. The people like myself and other artists and other freelancers who might be able to benefit. The paid aspect of this conversation is gonna be put to one side for now and I'm gonna try and tackle that into another video because that's one question that I do get asked quite a lot. Don't you get worried that you're not gonna have a steady income? That's a really high priority when it comes to finding work as a freelancer and as an artist in particular. Okay, so the main comments that I usually get as a freelance artist is how do you manage to do so much in such a little amount of time? So I thought I'd start by letting you know what I'm actually involved with at the moment and the projects that I'm doing. So at the moment I'm performing as a supernumerary, so it's like a supporting role for um, a show called Julie, which is on at the National. And basically, I'm one of nine other supernumeraries who create um, a party kind of scene, and we're kind of like added into different scenes throughout the play that enable the scene to kind of seem a little bit more full. Uh, and it's during a party scene. So I'm doing that at the moment. That requires quite a significant amount of time. I was asked to kind of attend all of the tech rehearsals. Um, not all of the rehearsals, I think we only just had one rehearsal. Wow, how many times can you say rehearsal in one sentence? <laughs> um, on top of that, we were asked to uh, attend all day shifts. So we had to be present within the theatre uh, on a daily basis during the previews up until press night. So that's one project that I'm doing at the moment and it doesn't really take that much thinking time, it just means that I have to be very present, I have to be there and on top form and alert. So um, that takes a, an element of focus if you like. And I found out about the role I think about a month, two months in advance so I just made sure that my diary was clear and that I wasn't taking on any other further bookings. And then another project that I'm involved with is with six other artists in my hometown called Northampton, which is based in the UK. And we're trying to make a show all about Northampton. And we're going to be putting it on at the local theatre here in Northampton as well. So far, we've been doing a research and development structure. So we've been we've just finished our third week of doing research and development, and that means we've been researching as artists uh, the local town, thinking about how we can create it into a theatrical piece. Um, and we've been devising it as well so you can find out a little bit more about that if you go to my Instagram page and as well as that I'm also writing a play that was put on and I just wanted to develop it um, I think it's a great piece and I'm trying to find like groups of people that are willing to work on it with me um, so I'm kind of looking at it from just not the writer's perspective but also a producer's perspective but I'm trying to find producers directors and trusts and charities that might be interested in it so I'm kind of doing all the logistical work for that as well. So after a few weeks of the rehearsal, technical rehearsal, the previews and press night, um, we had a little bit of a break in between and that's when I started my other project. So it, this was really exhausting. I ended up moving back to Northampton and started working on another research and development project which is the project about all, all about Northampton. So I really blocked my time out and I knew that I would be really tired so I decided not to do any writing in between that time. <coughs> You always get these problems when you film outside. Anyway, back to the video. So I just knew that my time would be like really, really limited in between 
doing the research and development project, the new theatrical piece, and being present at the theatre as well. It just meant that I would be really tired, so I decided not to kind of commit myself to any other projects in the daytime or in between. And then in the mix of all of that, I was then offered to do another show. So I had a call from someone who had seen me performing a few years ago and they wanted me to be in their new play. Um, it took some consideration of how I was actually going to manage it all because the rehearsal for that meant that it would be every week on my day off, the only day off that I have. So at the moment, I've got two weeks off where I'm not really doing anything. I'm doing a little bit of paid work. But other than that, I know that everything's gonna be absolutely chocker when it comes to all of the performances. What does chocker mean? What does it mean? Chocker block, like it's gonna be like back to back. Interesting, I should know that as a writer. Maybe I'll look that up. So I knew that it was just gonna be hectic, basically. Yeah, that's what it means, it means hectic. I knew that it was gonna be really hectic. Um, so I decided to do it anyway. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. So that means that my diary is absolutely full at the moment. So in the middle of making YouTube videos, doing rehearsals for two new plays, put one more in there, why not? And it just meant that I would have a little bit more money, I would have a little bit more experience, it would mean working with people that I found really, really interesting. Um, and also one of the main reasons for taking on that other third play project was working with other people and the people that are involved with it are really specific and they speak a lot to the way that I'm trying to develop myself as an artist. Um, they're all from ethnically diverse backgrounds, they all hold very contemporary views and so these are people that I really wanted to work with um, and so I just decided to say yes. And then I'm also going to be commuting to do the research project and be doing the national as well and as a result of this I had to say no to some other the work that I'm doing with another theatre company in Northampton I had to say no to that opportunity which was a set of rehearsals working towards like a scratch night of new plays um, I've actually <laughs> I've got one more thing that I'm working on as well but this was actually in the beginning of the year so I decided to write a play with another playwright um, and by doing that I knew that I would be so so busy with other different theatre projects that having someone else to work with was actually a blessing. We did that in the beginning of the year, so I, I knew around about now that that kind of, the rehearsals for that would be taking place. I can't believe I'm juggling all of this myself. So I've actually got two weeks off at the moment, which is a godsend, like I said, and um, I'm just taking that time just to catch up on loads of work, uh, to try and get myself as organized as possible for work coming in the future, focus on myself, spend some time with my friends and family, do some videos, uh, finish off my writing and kind of think about the future as well to plan ahead for the rest of the year and maybe into next year as well. So some top tips that I have for when you are trying to juggle as many things as possible and also in trying to include life into that as well. So number one, have others involved. I'm actually trying to develop a new website at the moment and I've got someone else working with me. And like I mentioned before, I'm writing a play with someone else. It's always really handy to work with other people, have other collaborators, make sure other people are like leading on other things that you can't necessarily do. In terms of the writing of the play and, and finding of the right team for that, for that side of that project, that's something that I definitely have to take a lead on. But eventually, if you get the right people involved, it will mean that it will kind of take off on its own and at a much quicker pace, especially if you get the right people and if it's done on your terms as well. So number two, try not to think of each of the projects as a whole. Don't try and see the whole picture for each entire project because that will just completely put you off. Try and break it down. And the way that I kind of view that is on a monthly basis. So what is going to be happening within that month I'm going to be doing rehearsals, okay there's no performance in that time, so I can just focus on getting the words right, I can focus on doing a bit of research, I can focus on doing some writing, spending time with my family, my friends, uh, focus all the other issues that are going on in my life in that moment, which is actually equally as important. Which brings me on to my third point, prioritise. So, if you are having to move house because your landlord's kicked you out, for example, then you need to prioritise that. And if you can give as much notice to the leaders of the group projects that you're a part of, then the better. People don't like to be surprised last minute. So as long as you notify them saying, hey, I've got this thing going on, my car's broken down, or I need to try and find a new car, I need to try and find a new home, 
or you know my family's ill I need to take care of them can I still do, be a part of this project but can we like rearrange something is there something that you can do to accommodate and you'd be really surprised especially within the arts industry at how accommodating people are and how lovely they are if you surround yourself with the right people then there will always be an element of understanding but make sure to prioritize you and your life first one thing I do want to kind of add here is my family and my loved ones and the people that I hold closest to me have been my rock throughout these really testing times when it comes to juggling my work they've been really supportive in terms of financially supportive and also like little things like driving me here and there and so it's really key to keep those relationships established and to keep those relationships as a priority obviously there needs to be an understanding as well that you're going off and doing all of this work and you know you're this is your job as well obviously sometimes family members might not be able to understand that but once they see that you know this is your passion and this is what's making you happy and you're bringing in an income and you're surviving then they're going to be happy for you because they're your family and they're your loved ones and they, they they love you and they're going to support you and it's also about trusting in that and also underneath the priority tip I would also add looking into something called bullet journal um, I will create a link underneath in the comments section below of how you can organize yourself according to the bullet journal method it's worked wonders for me I've used it for about a year year and a half maybe two years now and there are lots and lots of ways of how you can create the bullet journal um, method speaking of organizing it brings me nicely onto tip number four being as organized as possible so using the bullet journal you can plan ahead you can think about what you're going to do in far in advance uh, keep a diary I tend to keep mine on my phone nowadays just because it allows me to add loads of bits like uh, the location the time of when it's going to start and finish I get like an email alert as well beforehand of what I'm doing that day or even like a day a few days before so it's about being as planned and as organised as possible. As a freelancer, you have to spend the time finding the work, but once you get the work, not moaning about it because you're so busy. And that's usually as a result because it's, for me anyway, I've not prepared enough. Um, if I've prepared everything and I know in far in advance that everything's kind of coming, I can feel a lot better about it. So I know that sounds really silly just in terms of like how it feels, as you approach these jobs and the fact that you're juggling, um, it just helps like knowing all of these things that you're going to have to do. So for example, I know that I'm gonna be working on the research and development project in Northampton, as well as doing the show at the National for four consecutive days in August. I'm gonna be going backwards and forwards. So I've booked my train ticket. I don't want to be driving. Um, I've got a plan of how I'm gonna to get to the train station and back. I know that I'm gonna try and sleep on the train as much as possible. Um, and I'm going to relax during that time whilst I'm at the theatre um, and I'm going to try and eat healthily as well which takes off the heat of life is a struggle I'm living the daily grind kind of attitude it just takes the heat off of everything so as like a subcategory for being organised I have connected with a few temp agencies and a few places of work that have kindly given me and supported me in terms of giving me temp work and administrative work during those times where I'm not working as an actor or uh, being funded to or commissioned to write a play I've managed to get some quality work in between so it just means that you've got a steady income coming in in between those projects but again the income side of things is going to be for another video and tip number five be easy on yourself if you don't get something right the first time don't punish yourself to no end give yourself that time and understand that you've actually got a lot going on and you're trying to do your best in absolutely everything and you're not going to get everything right all of the time this is just uh, the beginning of something that's great to come and you're doing your absolute best so forgive yourself give yourself some credit and go into yourself try and understand and learn what's going on in your mind mental health at the moment is really really important and you need to take that time to take care of yourself so if you need that extra hour in bed knowing that you're going to be performing later on in the evening or if you've got a deadline or if you know you're going to be working a little bit later in the evening whatever it is that you're doing if you're doing bar work or whatever allow yourself that extra hour and don't let anyone tell you that it's not right for you i've been there you're not going to get things right all the time be good to yourself forgive yourself and try and prioritize your health 
as a result of that because that will really help you with that attitude of like you know I'm trying to do everything right and I'm failing and I'm you know and I'm not getting everything done. Oh, there's a lovely little bird right next to me and a butterfly. No, I love being outside. You know, I failed a few times as well. I've let people down. I've been late to things just because I've overslept or I've just tried to plan everything just before I've decided to leave for work that day um, because I haven't prepared enough the night before or prepared enough in advance, you know, trying to make my lunch or something and then I've been late or, you know, I've missed a train. I'm just try and think how you can rectify it the next time. You get things wrong, but you're only human and you're gonna get it right next time. You know, there have been a few times where I've got quite a lot of things wrong, especially within this research and development group that I'm a part of. Um, I actually left my phone behind one evening and had to ask them to look after it. I was late a couple of times, um, got some of the dates wrong as to what days I could be there and what time I had to like leave early. Um, you know and they're a really forgiving group and you know I just talked to them and I understood that I had a lot of things going on at that time and you know so I didn't get things right all of the time decided not to do any writing for a couple of days gave myself some time off and tried to prepare as much as possible and sleep as much as possible to energize re-energize and get back on form which brings me to the end of the video but I'm going to give you a little bonus tip as well and it's probably based on everything that I've just said um, but make sure to find some rest time so if you're ready to quit and you don't want to do this industry anymore I think it's probably because we're not giving ourselves enough time to have a real proper break so if you've got the money if you've got the time really really rest go to a lovely location just take in the nature there are so many beautiful places that you can go to locally I know for me in the UK there are so many lovely places that are local to me and I can just go for a walk get connected to nature for me anyway and it might be different for you if it is different for you comment below let me know your thoughts and let me know your thoughts in general of this video did you like it have you got any tips for freelancers have you got any tips for artists have you struggled as an artist have you wanted to give up uh, let's have that conversation and until the next video